In the bustling hive of the office, my fingers danced across the keyboard, absorbed in the rhythm of my work. Each click echoed through the cubicle as I meticulously tackled the day's tasks. But just as I settled into my routine, a familiar presence approached. Charlotte, the enigmatic force behind our team's success. With her characteristic confidence, she glided over to my desk, a conspiratorial glimmer in her eyes. Hey, Noah, she greeted, her voice tinged with intrigue. Got a little proposition for you. I glanced up from my screen, immediately intrigued by her mysterious demeanor. What's up, I replied, curiosity piqued. Leaning in closer, Charlotte's lips curved into a playful smile. I dare you to attend a secret lingerie party with me, she whispered, her voice tinged with excitement. And trust me, there's a special reward waiting for you if you're up for the challenge. Her words hit me like a bolt of lightning. A lingerie party? My mind raced with a whirlwind of questions and uncertainties. What kind of party was this? And more importantly, what kind of reward awaited me at the end of it? But before I could even begin to process her proposal, Charlotte continued, her enthusiasm infectious. Think about it, Noah, she urged, her eyes twinkling with mischief. It's a chance to step out of your comfort zone, have a little fun, and who knows, you might just meet someone special there. Her words hung in the air, tantalizing and tempting. As a single guy navigating the bustling city life, the prospect of mingling at a mysterious party held a certain allure. Maybe Charlotte was onto something. I could use a bit of excitement in my life. I, I mean, sure, Charlotte, I stammered, trying to mask my uncertainty with a casual tone. Sounds interesting. Count me in. But before I could even finish my sentence, Charlotte's expression shifted, her playful demeanor taking on a more serious edge. Ah, but Noah, she interrupted, her tone firm. There's a catch. A catch? My heart sank as a knot of apprehension formed in the pit of my stomach. What had I gotten myself into now? If you're going to attend, Noah, Charlotte continued, her voice lowering to a conspiratorial whisper. You have to attend as a woman. As a woman? The words hung in the air, sending a jolt of disbelief coursing through me. There was no way I was prepared for something like that. I mean, who in their right mind would agree to such a ludicrous request? As Charlotte raised her finger, her expression unwavering, I felt the weight of her words sink in. No arguments, Noah, she insisted, her voice firm, leaving me with no room for negotiation. Before I could voice my concerns, Charlotte dropped another bombshell. Well, let's just say if you don't come, let's just say that promotion you're after might go to someone else, she hinted, her tone laced with subtle threat. My heart skipped a beat at the mention of the promotion, something I had been working towards for months. The thought of losing out on such a significant opportunity left me reeling, my mind racing with the implications of Charlotte's ultimatum. It'll be fun, I promise. Charlotte assured me, her tone softening slightly. And besides, it's a chance to let loose and have a bit of excitement in your life. But why do I have to attend as a girl? I protested, unable to comprehend the logic behind Charlotte's demand. Charlotte's expression hardened, her patience wearing thin. No more questions, Noah, she declared, her voice leaving no room for argument. You want this promotion or not? I hesitated, torn between my desire for career advancement and my reluctance to cross such a boundary. I do, I finally replied, swallowing my pride as I made my decision. Perfect, Charlotte exclaimed, a triumphant gleam in her eye. I'll teach you everything there is to being a woman. Come to my office after you've finished your work. I'll turn you into a beautiful woman. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I nodded reluctantly, resigning myself to my fate. With that, I heard the unmistakable click of Charlotte's heels as she walked away, leaving me alone with my swirling thoughts. I tried to focus on my work, to bury myself in the mundane tasks that usually occupied my mind, 
but the looming specter of the lingerie party refused to be ignored. What if it was all a setup from Charlotte? What if she intended to expose me as a guy to everyone, humiliating me in front of my colleagues and friends? And then there was the matter of my appearance. Would Charlotte expect me to shave off my beard? The thought sent a shiver down my spine, and I instinctively reached up to touch the rough stubble on my chin. The idea of parting with my facial hair felt like a betrayal of my masculinity, a sacrifice I wasn't sure I was willing to make. But amidst the whirlwind of anxiety and uncertainty, there was another, more unsettling feeling lurking beneath the surface. As I pictured the scene of the lingerie party in my mind, a strange sense of excitement stirred within me. The thought of being surrounded by beautiful women, all dressed in revealing lingerie, ignited a flicker of arousal deep within me. And then there was Charlotte, my boss, my mentor, and now the orchestrator of this daring scheme. The image of her clad in lacy lingerie sent a thrill of anticipation coursing through me, my pulse quickening at the mere thought of her commanding presence. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but there was something undeniably intoxicating about being bossed around by Charlotte. The way she exuded confidence and authority, the way she effortlessly commanded the attention of everyone in the room, it was both intimidating and strangely arousing. Finally finishing my work, I gathered my courage and awkwardly made my way towards Charlotte's office. As I approached, my heart pounded with nervous anticipation. Before I could even knock, the door flew open, revealing Charlotte standing there, a smirk playing at the corners of her lips. Well, you're in for a treat, Noah, she greeted, her eyes dancing with mischief. Or should I say Natalie? That's what you go by now. I swallowed hard, the reality of the situation sinking in. Okay, I replied, my voice barely above a whisper. What's next? Charlotte ushered me inside, urging me to take a seat. As I settled into the chair, my nerves tingled with anticipation. What was Charlotte planning to do to me? And more importantly, how far was I willing to go to fulfill her demands? Without skipping a beat, Charlotte pulled out a shaver, her movements swift and decisive. With practiced ease, she removed my beard, each stroke of the blade sending a ripple of sensation through me. It was an oddly intimate experience, one that left me feeling strangely vulnerable, yet exhilarated. Once the last traces of facial hair were gone, Charlotte reached for a blonde wig, carefully placing it atop my head. As she adjusted the strands, a transformation began to take shape before my eyes. Was this really me? Or was I merely playing a part in Charlotte's twisted game? But there was no time to dwell on my existential crisis. With a skilled hand, Charlotte began to apply makeup, her touch gentle yet firm. As she worked, I found myself strangely captivated by the sensation, the brush against my skin, the sweep of color across my cheeks. It was as if each stroke brought me closer to a truth I had long denied. Lost in the moment, I barely noticed when Charlotte's gaze flickered downwards, her eyes lingering on a certain bulge in my pants. You don't want that sticking out at the party now, do you? She teased, her voice low and husky. Heat flooded my cheeks as I stammered for a response, my mind racing with a thousand conflicting emotions. This surreal experience had taken on a life of its own, blurring the lines between fantasy and reality in a way I never could have anticipated. Without missing a beat, Charlotte reached for a set of lacy bra and panties, a mischievous glint in her eyes. These are the special touch, she remarked, her voice dripping with amusement. Before I could protest, she tugged at my trousers, deftly unbuttoning my shirt with practiced ease. My heart pounded in my chest as a surge of arousal coursed through me, my breaths coming in ragged gasps. With a deft motion, Charlotte removed my boxers, her expression turning disdainful as she glanced at my exposed manhood. Pathetic, she remarked, her tone cutting like a knife. And before I could react, she slipped the delicate panties over my now-tamed member, a smirk playing at her lips. 
that's much better, she declared, her voice laced with satisfaction. I'm turning you into the sissy you always were. The words hit me like a punch to the gut, a wave of conflicting emotions washing over me. Without skipping a beat, Charlotte gracefully kicked off her heels, her eyes twinkling with mischief. Here, Natalie, she said, handing me the delicate footwear with a knowing wink. These will suit the outfit perfectly. I hesitated, eyeing the heels warily as if they were a foreign entity. Are you sure I'm ready for heels? I asked, my voice tinged with uncertainty. Charlotte chuckled, a playful smile playing at her lips. Of course, Natalie, she replied, her confidence unwavering. You'll be a natural in no time. With a deep breath, I slipped on the heels, my legs wobbling unsteadily beneath me as I struggled to find my balance. But as I steadied myself against the wall, a sense of exhilaration washed over me, a feeling of empowerment unlike anything I had ever experienced before. Turning to face the mirror, I was met with a sight that took my breath away. Gone was the familiar face of Noah, replaced by the stunning visage of Natalie, a woman transformed, her features softened, and her confidence radiating from within. But Charlotte wasn't finished yet. How could I forget? She exclaimed, a playful twinkle in her eye. With a flourish, she produced a pair of breast enhancers, expertly fitting them onto my chest. Instantly, my figure was transformed, the added curves giving me a more feminine silhouette. As I admired my reflection in the mirror, a sense of awe washed over me. Was this really me? The woman staring back at me seemed like a stranger, an alluring, irresistible stranger who held the promise of a world filled with excitement and adventure. But Charlotte had one final surprise in store, with a mischievous grin, she slipped butt enhancers down my panties, molding them to fit my curves perfectly. I couldn't help but gasp as I felt the added volume beneath me, the sensation sending a shiver of pleasure down my spine. Running my hands over my newly enhanced curves, I couldn't help but marvel at the transformation. But Charlotte wasn't finished with her makeover just yet. With a mischievous glint in her eye, she glanced down at my legs, a look of mock horror crossing her features. You, I didn't even see your hairy legs, she exclaimed, her tone filled with playful disdain. Before I could even react, Charlotte was already rummaging through her desk drawer, producing an epilator with a triumphant flourish. Good thing I keep this here, she remarked, her voice tinged with amusement. With practiced ease, Charlotte set to work, removing my leg hair with precision and efficiency. The sensation was both strange and oddly satisfying, a strange mixture of discomfort and pleasure that left me squirming in my seat. As Charlotte moved on to my arms and chest, I couldn't help but flinch at the sensation of the epilator against my skin. Each pull sent a jolt of sensation coursing through me, leaving me acutely aware of every inch of my body. But as Charlotte reached my upper legs, her teasing remarks took on a more suggestive tone. My, my, seems like someone's enjoying themselves, she teased, her voice low and husky. I think your manhood likes being feminized and dressed up as a girl, don't you think so? Heat flooded my cheeks as I struggled to find a response, my mind reeling with a whirlwind of conflicting emotions. Charlotte's teasing remarks had left me feeling both flustered and strangely exhilarated, my pulse quickening with each passing moment. Before I could gather my thoughts, Charlotte's voice broke through the haze of my mind. Now you're all ready, Natalie, she declared, her tone filled with satisfaction. I blinked, momentarily taken aback by the sudden shift in focus. What about you? I blurted out, unable to contain my curiosity. With a sly grin, Charlotte reached for the hem of her blouse, her movements deliberate and unhurried. In one fluid motion, she stripped off her clothes, revealing the lacy lingerie beneath. My breath caught in my throat as I took in the sight before me, Charlotte, standing there in all her glory, a vision of sensuality and confidence. Wow, I whispered, unable to tear my eyes away from her. But Charlotte wasn't done yet. 
With a playful wink, she sauntered over to me, her movements fluid and graceful. Well, what are you waiting for? She teased, her voice dripping with amusement. Let's go. With a mixture of excitement and trepidation, I followed Charlotte out of her office, my heart pounding in my chest. As we made our way through the empty corridors of the office, a sense of anticipation hung in the air, thick and palpable. As I briskly walked into the glass and steel confines of Hampton and Stevens, my heart raced in harmony with the clicking of my heels against the polished floor. Ryan Parker, unassuming office worker by day, harbored a secret as delicate as the fabrics that adorned my hidden world. Nestled in the heart of this prestigious corporate office, I was the master of a clandestine universe that knew me as more than just a cog in the corporate machini. You see, by day, I was Ryan Parker, your quintessential professional, a dedicated employee with a position that screamed success. By night, however, I shed the monotonous grays and blues of the corporate world to embrace a kaleidoscope of colors, textures, and the soft touch of silk against my skin. My passion for cross-dressing was a clandestine affair, an intimate dance between the man the world knew and the woman within me. I reveled in the private world I had meticulously curated, one adorned with delicate fabrics, stylish dresses, and accessories carefully chosen to complement the woman I hid beneath the tailored suits and polished shoes. In the sanctuary of my apartment, a closet concealed my alter ego. Silky garments whispered promises of another life, where the traditional boundaries of gender melted away, giving rise to a version of myself that felt authentic and liberated. Each dress, each pair of heels, and every strand of pearls held a story, a testament to the clandestine affair that unfolded behind closed doors. The thrill of selecting the perfect outfit, the delicate rustle of fabrics as I transformed, and the gentle caress of makeup against my skin became a ritual, an escape from the corporate world's suffocating embrace. It wasn't just about the clothes, it was about embracing a different facet of myself, a side that the boardrooms and water cooler conversations would never fathom. As I navigated through the maze of cubicles and hushed conversations, I couldn't help but feel a surge of adrenaline, wondering if my secret would ever be exposed. Hampton and Stevens, a bastion of corporate conformity, held no room for a man with a penchant for high heels and lace. The morning sunlight spilled through the curtains as I carefully navigated the minefield of potential discovery. Samantha, my ever-supportive wife, was humming in the kitchen, oblivious to the clandestine act taking place in our bedroom. With practiced precision, I selected my ensemble for the day. A crisp shirt, a neatly pressed suit, and of course, the delicate lace panties that had become an intimate part of my morning ritual. The fear of discovery lingered like a phantom as I dressed, my every move tinged with a sense of urgency. Samantha had no inkling of my clandestine world, and I was determined to keep it that way. Days turned into weeks, and my dual life continued without incident until that fateful morning. Samantha, working from home, had unintentionally become a factor in the delicate balance I maintained, with a sense of caution, I stowed my cross-dressing essentials in my bag before leaving for the office, hoping to avert any accidental discoveries. However, the universe had other plans that day. As I strolled into the office lobby, a misplaced step caused my bag strap to slide down my shoulder, unleashing its contents onto the cold, unyielding floor. Panic gripped me as I scrambled to gather my belongings, desperately trying to maintain the veneer of composure. In the midst of this chaos, I noticed a pair of elegant high heels approaching. My heart raced, and a cold sweat formed on my forehead. It was Rachel Mitchell, my no-nonsense boss, her eyes narrowing as she surveyed the scattered papers and personal effects. Need some help? She asked her tone a mix of curiosity and concern. Grateful for the lifeline, I nodded, attempting to mask the tremor in my hands. As Rachel bent down to assist, the world seemed to slow. 
A fleeting glance at the exposed contents of my bag revealed the lacy black panties lying inconspicuously amidst the paperwork. Rachel paused, her eyes fixated on the unexpected discovery. Um, whose are these? She asked, her voice a mixture of shock and intrigue. Caught in the unrelenting gaze of my boss, I hesitated, searching for words that could somehow unravel the delicate threads of my secret without tearing apart the fabric of my professional life. Come into my office now. This is not appropriate. With trepidation, I followed her down the corridor to the confines of her office. The door closed behind us, sealing the impending revelation within its four walls. Rachel gestured towards a chair, her stern gaze demanding an explanation. This is not the kind of thing we tolerate here, Ryan. It's unprofessional, she stated, her words carrying the weight of authority. I nodded, acknowledging the gravity of the situation, but deep down, a small flame of defiance flickered within me. Maybe, just maybe, this could be an opportunity for understanding. As we both settled into the chairs, Rachel continued. I assumed these were your wife's, but that doesn't make it appropriate either. We have standards in the workplace, and personal matters should remain just that, personal. Her words hung in the air, a palpable tension wrapping around us. In that moment, I made a decision. I couldn't bear the thought of being judged or dismissed without a chance to explain the true nature of my secret. With a deep breath, I gathered my courage and said, Rachel, they're actually mine. I enjoy embracing femininity, and cross-dressing is a hobby of mine. Rachel's eyes widened, the shock intensifying. For a moment, the weight of judgment seemed poised to crush me. However, as the seconds ticked by, a curious glint appeared in her eyes, a spark of intrigue that hinted at a broader understanding. You? she asked, her tone softening with a mix of surprise and curiosity. I nodded, feeling a blend of vulnerability and relief. Yes, me. It's something I've kept to myself for a long time. Rachel leaned back in her chair, processing the revelation. After a thoughtful pause, she said, Well, I can't say I expected this, Ryan, but I appreciate your honesty. This is certainly unconventional. Tell me more. Encouraged by her unexpected openness, I began to share my journey with cross-dressing. The struggles with societal norms and the liberating feeling of embracing my feminine side. After a moment of contemplation, Rachel rose from her chair and walked to the door. She returned moments later, holding a dress and a wig. Why don't you show me? She suggested. Really? I asked, taken aback. Are you sure it's okay? Do it now. I want to see, she insisted. Feeling a mix of nervousness and curiosity, I complied. As I began undressing, Rachel observed with a discerning gaze. I caught a glimpse of uncertainty in her eyes, but her determination to understand prevailed. I stood there in my boxers and she remarked, no lady wears boxers. With that, she tossed a pair of lacy panties and a bra onto the table. Here, put these on now. Awkwardly, I slipped into the delicate undergarments, feeling the weight of Rachel's scrutiny. Next came the wig, transforming me further. A dress followed suit. I looked at Rachel, unsure of what to expect. Missing anything? She inquired. I don't know, I replied, feeling a hint of embarrassment. Rachel walked over, kicked off her heels, and said, why don't you try these on? She handed me the heels, and as I slid my feet into them, I realized they were still warm from her pantyhose-clad feet. They fit perfectly, Rachel observed with a discerning eye. You look sexy, don't you? She remarked. Thank you, I replied, my cheeks flushing with a mix of embarrassment and gratitude. Rachel's gaze softened, and with a mischievous glint, she suggested, maybe I can promote you to be my personal assistant. As I stepped out of the office building, the weight of the day seemed to cling to me like the humidity in the air. Another mundane day at work had passed, filled with the same monotonous tasks and tedious meetings. 
but amidst the sea of gray suits and dull cubicles, I held onto my own secret sanctuary, the soft embrace of pantyhose against my skin. For weeks now, I had been discreetly slipping into pantyhose before heading to work. It was my way of reclaiming a sense of comfort and femininity in a world that often felt rigid and unforgiving. With each delicate fabric encasing my legs, I felt a subtle shift in my demeanor, a subtle reminder that there was more to me than met the eye. As I unlocked the door to my apartment, a wave of relief washed over me. Finally, I could shed the facade of masculinity that I wore like a heavy cloak all day. With practiced ease, I peeled off my work attire and slipped into something more comfortable, a red wig, panties, and a bra. These were the garments that truly felt like second skin, the ones that allowed me to be my authentic self. With each article of clothing, I felt a surge of liberation coursing through my veins. The weight of societal expectations melted away, replaced by a sense of empowerment that only comes from embracing one's true identity. Stepping into a pair of high heels, I felt myself growing taller, more confident, more alive. For as long as I could remember, I had felt like a woman trapped in a man's body. From my earliest days, I gravitated towards the company of women, drawn to their grace, their elegance, their unapologetic embrace of femininity. While other boys played sports or video games, I found solace in conversations about makeup and fashion, eagerly soaking up every detail like a sponge. But society had other plans for me, a script to follow, a role to play. I tried to conform, to mold myself into the shape of expectation, but it never felt quite right. It was as if I was living someone else's life, wearing someone else's skin. And so, in the quiet moments of solitude, I allowed myself to be who I truly was, a woman in every sense of the word, as I strutted around my apartment in heels that clicked confidently against the hardwood floor, I knew that this was where I belonged. The familiar sights and sounds of my sanctuary enveloped me, offering a sense of security and serenity that was unmatched anywhere else. I made my way to the vanity, where an array of makeup products awaited my attention. With practiced precision, I began to apply foundation, concealer, and blush, each stroke of the brush a testament to the hours spent watching YouTube tutorials and mastering the art of transformation. As I carefully lined my eyes and painted my lips a bold shade of red, I felt myself slipping effortlessly into the persona of Clara, my truest self. Clara wasn't just a name. She was a reflection of everything I had ever wanted to be. Confident, elegant, unapologetically feminine. In her guise, I found the courage to express myself in ways that had always felt out of reach, whether it was the way she walked, the way she talked, or the way she carried herself with unwavering grace, Clara embodied everything I had ever dreamed of. But amidst the comfort and familiarity of my private world, a nagging thought lingered in the back of my mind. The desire to wear panties to work had been growing stronger with each passing day, a quiet rebellion against the constraints of societal norms. Yet, the fear of being caught lingered like a shadow, casting doubt on my resolve. I had become adept at passing off the wearing of pantyhose as a mere fashion choice, a harmless quirk that raised few eyebrows. But panties were a different story altogether. There was no plausible deniability, no way to play it off as anything other than what it was, a deliberate expression of my true self. The thought of being exposed, of facing the scrutiny and judgment of my coworkers, sent a shiver down my spine. What if they laughed, or worse, what if they saw me as something less than human? The fear of rejection, of being cast out from the world I had worked so hard to navigate, threatened to overwhelm me. But then, as I gazed at my reflection in the mirror, I saw Clara looking back at me, strong, resilient, unapologetically herself. And in that moment, I knew that no amount of fear or uncertainty could dim her light. Whether it was wearing panties to work or embracing her true identity in every aspect of her life, 
Clara was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. With newfound determination coursing through my veins, I left the vanity behind and made my way to the bathroom. The familiar hum of the electric razor filled the room as I prepared to shave my legs. My body hair, especially on my legs, seemed to grow at an alarming rate, necessitating daily maintenance. But the ritual of shaving had become more than just a chore. It was a sacred act of self-care, a tangible reminder of the lengths I was willing to go to feel comfortable in my own skin. As I applied the shaving foam and glided the razor across my skin, I couldn't help but marvel at the transformation taking place before my eyes. With each stroke, the rough stubble gave way to silky smoothness, a canvas waiting to be adorned with the delicate embrace of pantyhose. I had learned from experience that pantyhose felt infinitely more sensual against freshly shaved legs, heightening the sensation of femininity that coursed through my veins. Despite the occasional nicks and cuts, I relished in the process, knowing that the end result would be worth every moment of discomfort. For Clara, the act of shaving was about more than just aesthetics. It was a reaffirmation of her commitment to living authentically, unapologetically, and without compromise. As I rinsed off the last remnants of foam and surveyed my smooth, glistening legs in the mirror, I couldn't help but smile. In the reflection, I saw not just Eugene, but Clara, a woman who refused to be confined by society's narrow definitions of gender and identity. The next morning, I woke up with a newfound sense of motivation coursing through my veins. Today, I didn't just want to wear panties to work, I wanted to take it a step further and wear a bra, too. The thought filled me with a mixture of excitement and trepidation. I knew that wearing a bra would make it obvious, especially under the thin white shirt that was part of my work attire. But I was determined to find a way to make it work. After carefully selecting a bra that matched my panties, I slipped it on underneath my shirt, feeling a surge of empowerment as the strap settled snugly against my shoulders. To conceal it, I opted to wear a loose-fitting sweater on top, hoping it would provide enough coverage without drawing too much attention. As I stepped out of my apartment and onto the bustling city streets, I couldn't contain the grin that spread across my face. Today, I was taking yet another bold step towards embracing my true self, unabashedly and without reservation. It was a small victory, perhaps, but to me, it felt monumental. With each confident stride, I felt the weight of societal expectations melting away, replaced by a sense of freedom and authenticity. In my mind, I played out scenarios of strutting into the office in heels, my hips swaying with every step, a vision of confidence and femininity. Though the idea of presenting as a woman in the workplace was still a distant dream, I allowed myself to indulge in the fantasy, if only for a moment. The thought brought a smile to my lips as I entered the office building, my heart brimming with a joy that could not be extinguished. I took my usual seat and delved into my work, the day's tasks quickly consuming my attention. Meetings came and went, blending into one another in a blur of presentations and discussions. Lost in the whirlwind of office politics and deadlines, I momentarily forgot about the lassie undergarments hidden beneath my professional attire. But as the stress of the day mounted and the stifling heat of the broken air conditioning system began to take its toll, I was abruptly reminded of my unconventional choice of attire. Beads of sweat formed on my brow as I fidgeted uncomfortably in my seat, the sensation of the bra straps digging into my skin becoming increasingly pronounced. In a desperate bid to alleviate the discomfort, I peeled off my sweater, oblivious to the curious glances that were beginning to dart in my direction. The meeting carried on as if nothing had changed, but I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that settled over me like a heavy shroud. As I made my way back to my desk, I couldn't help but notice the whispers and sidelong glances exchanged between my coworkers. What was happening, I wondered my mind racing with a million different possibilities. Despite the mounting sense of anxiety gnawing at my insides, I chose to push aside my doubts and focus on the task at hand. 
Ignoring the hushed conversations that swirled around me like a gathering storm, I buried myself in my work, determined not to let anyone else's perception of me dictate my actions. But as the day wore on and the whispers grew louder, I couldn't help but feel a pang of uncertainty creeping into my heart. But as the day wore on and the whispers grew louder, I couldn't help but feel a pang of uncertainty creeping into my heart. Each passing moment felt like an eternity, the weight of anticipation pressing down on me like a leaden blanket. However, my reverie was abruptly shattered by the sound of a notification bing on my laptop. It was an email from my boss, Rachel. The subject line simply read, My office now. My heart skipped a beat as I read those words, a knot of apprehension tightening in the pit of my stomach. What could this be about? I wondered, my mind racing with a flurry of anxious thoughts. Had I made a mistake? Was there an urgent project that required my immediate attention? With trembling hands, I closed my laptop and gathered my belongings, my footsteps echoing loudly in the otherwise silent office. As I made my way to Rachel's office, each step felt heavier than the last, the weight of uncertainty bearing down on me like a vice. I knocked tentatively on her door, my heart hammering in my chest as I awaited her response. Come in, her voice called from within, and with a deep breath, I pushed open the door and stepped inside. Rachel was seated behind her desk, her expression unreadable as she gestured for me to take a seat. I complied, my palms clammy with nervousness as I waited for her to speak. What's going on, Rachel? I ventured, unable to keep the tremor out of my voice. She regarded me for a moment, her gaze inscrutable, before finally speaking. Eugene, she began, her tone grave. I've received some concerns from your coworkers regarding your attire today. My heart plummeted as her words sank in, and I could feel the color draining from my face. How dumb was I not to notice that my sweater, my flimsy shield of secrecy, had failed me. I wished fervently that the ground would open up and swallow me whole, sparing me from the embarrassment that was sure to follow. As Rachel's gaze bore down on me, her expression growing increasingly stern, I found myself at a loss for words. How could I possibly explain this? How could I articulate the conflicting emotions that churned within me? The longing for acceptance, the fear of rejection, the desperate desire to live authentically in a world that seemed determined to force me into conformity? I, I'm sorry, Rachel, I stammered, my voice barely above a whisper. I didn't mean for anyone to notice. I was just trying to be myself. Rachel's expression softened slightly at my words, but there was still a hint of frustration lingering in her eyes. I understand, Eugene, she said, her tone gentle yet firm. But you have to understand that this is a professional environment and certain standards of dress are expected. I nodded, feeling a lump form in my throat. Of course, I understood, but that didn't make the sting of rejection any less painful the sense of shame any less acute. I'm sorry, I repeated, my voice barely audible now. It won't happen again. Rachel sighed, her features softening with empathy. Look, Eugene, she said, her tone gentle yet firm. I appreciate your honesty, but we need to find a way to address this moving forward. I can't have distractions like this in the workplace. I swallowed hard, nodding in agreement. I understand, I murmured, though the words tasted bitter on my tongue. Before I could muster a response, Rachel's voice cut through the silence like a knife. Take off your shirt, she commanded, her tone leaving no room for argument. Huh? I stammered, unable to comprehend where this was heading. Take it off, she repeated, her patience wearing thin. Nervously, I fumbled with the buttons of my shirt, my fingers trembling with each movement. As I peeled off the fabric, my worst fears were realized. My panties were on full display, drawing Rachel's gaze like a moth to a flame. Panties too, 
she exclaimed, her tone laced with disgust. Do you want to be a woman, Eugene? I'm sorry, I whispered, my voice barely above a hoarse whisper. I just, I wanted to experience, take off your trousers, she interrupted, her voice steely. With trembling hands, I complied, revealing the pantyhose underneath. Rachel's eyes narrowed in disapproval. Pantyhose too, huh? Were you planning to wear heels tomorrow or something? I swallowed hard, unable to meet her gaze. I, you know what? She interjected, a dangerous glint in her eyes. If you want to be a woman so badly, I can make you a pretty girl. Before I could protest, she kicked off her heels and slid them across the floor towards me. Go on, she urged. They'll look sexy with your pantyhose. With a sense of resignation, I awkwardly slipped them on, my fingers fumbling with the straps. Can't even do the straps, can you? Rachel sneered, demonstrating the simple motion with ease. My cheeks burned with humiliation as I struggled to emulate her movements. Rachel opened a drawer, revealing a vibrant red wig. Put it on, she commanded. I complied in silence, the weight of the situation settling heavily on my shoulders. What a coincidence, I thought bitterly, that the wig she had chosen matched the one I wore in the privacy of my own home. Now, she said, her voice taking on a sinister edge, do a catwalk for me. Show me how sexy you are. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I obliged, attempting to sashay in her towering stilettos. Despite my best efforts, I stumbled awkwardly, unused to the height of her heels. You want to dress up as a woman? She remarked, her tone dripping with disdain. But you can't even walk in heels. I hung my head in shame, feeling like a fool forever thinking I could pull off this charade. But then, to my surprise, Rachel's expression softened, a glimmer of intrigue sparking in her eyes. You know what, she said, a slow smile spreading across her face. I'm hiring for a personal assistant. How would you like to be my personal assistant, Eugene? My heart skipped a beat at her words, a mix of disbelief and excitement flooding through me before I could say anything. Good, she said her smile widening. Let me dress you up as a woman, and I'll teach you everything there is to know about femininity. I want you to dress up as a girl every day and serve me. As her words sank in, I felt a surge of exhilaration coursing through my veins. Today was different. A subtle thrill buzzed beneath my skin as I navigated the familiar corridors of my workplace. I am Adam, a name synonymous with routine and conformity but beneath this facade lies a secret that ignites a hidden passion within me. I am a cross-dresser. As I settled into my cubicle, the soft hum of fluorescent lights above me, I stole a glance at the clock. It was time. Today, I decided to embrace the essence of my hidden identity, weaving it seamlessly into the fabric of my everyday routine. The anticipation mingled with the scent of ink and paper, the soundtrack of clicking keyboards surrounding me. It was a rush of excitement, the kind that only comes with the thrill of the forbidden. I discreetly reached into my bag, fingers brushing against the delicate fabric hidden within. Panties and pantyhose, carefully folded and nestled in a secret compartment, became my allies in this clandestine affair. With a quick, furtive glance around the office, I slipped into the restroom, locking the door behind me. The stark white tiles and harsh fluorescent lights cast a sterile glow, but in this small private sanctuary, I could be myself. The act of changing felt like shedding one skin and embracing another, a ritual that transcended the mundane realities of my everyday life. The cool touch of the pantyhose against my skin and the subtle embrace of the panties provided a comforting sense of liberation. As I looked at myself in the mirror, a transformation unfolded. Adam, the office drone, became a more authentic version of himself. Returning to my desk, a newfound confidence surged within me, 
I could feel the soft caress of the pantyhose beneath my trousers, a secret only I held. The mundane office tasks took on a different hue. Each keystroke and phone call carried a hidden significance. It was a delicate dance, a balancing act between the expectations of society and the desires of my true self. The clock ticked away, and the workday unfolded like any other, yet it was anything but ordinary for me. The thrill of cross-dressing in the workplace fueled my productivity, a secret weapon that transformed the monotony into a personal victory. As I navigated through the sea of cubicles, I couldn't help but relish in the duality of my existence, Adam, the unassuming office worker, and the hidden persona that lingered just beneath the surface. As the workday drew to a close, the office gradually emptied, leaving me alone with the echoes of my own footsteps. I couldn't help but relish in the duality of my existence. Adam, the unassuming office worker, and the hidden persona that lingered just beneath the surface. The exhilaration of my secret indulgence lingered in the air, infusing the mundane surroundings with an air of rebellion. Returning home, the anticipation that had been building throughout the day reached its peak. I locked the door behind me, ensuring my private world remained just that, private. Stripping off my office attire, I stood before the mirror, ready to shed the last remnants of Adam and fully embrace the woman within. My chestnut wig, carefully styled and waiting for this moment, was placed delicately on my head. The transformation was gradual but deliberate. Each article of clothing, each accessory, contributed to the emergence of the authentic version of myself. The soft rustle of fabric as I pulled on a dress, the click of the heels as I fastened them. These were the sounds of liberation, a symphony of self-discovery that played out in the privacy of my apartment. The reflection in the mirror no longer bore the resemblance of Adam. Instead, a confident woman stared back at me. My years of cross-dressing had prepared me for this moment, but there was something uniquely liberating about today's experience. Wearing panties and pantyhose to work had been a bold step, a declaration to the world that I refused to be confined by societal norms. With a sense of pride, I twirl it around my apartment, reveling in the click of my high heels against the floor. Each step felt like a stride towards authenticity, a journey to embrace the woman within me. The weight of secrecy that had accompanied me throughout the day melted away, replaced by a newfound sense of empowerment. The following day, I decided to continue the journey I had embarked upon. Once again, I wore the delicate embrace of panties and pantyhose beneath my work attire. As I walked into the office, a surge of confidence propelled me forward. The secret that once felt like a heavy burden now transformed into a source of strength, propelling me to face the world with newfound assurance. However, my self-assurance wavered as I caught sight of her, Evelyn, my boss. There was an air of authority about her that commanded respect and an aura of mystery that set her apart from the rest. Colleagues whispered in hushed tones about her, sharing tales of her formidable reputation. Yet, despite the fear, I couldn't help but deeply admire her fashion sense. Evelyn exuded confidence in every step, effortlessly donning a tight dress that accentuated her curves and high heels that added a dash of allure. Today, she wore my favorite pair, and as my gaze fixated on her heels, she snapped me out of my admiration with a simple question. Something stuck on my heels, Adam? She inquired, clicking her fingers for emphasis. Panic momentarily seized me, but I quickly gathered my composure. With a nervous laugh, I managed to conjure up an excuse, deflecting attention away from my fixation on her heels. No, sorry. Just lost in thought, I stammered, attempting to mask my unease. With a dismissive wave, Evelyn continued on her way, leaving me with a racing heart and a lingering sense of vulnerability. I carried on working, trying to push aside the uneasiness that lingered after my encounter with Evelyn. My focus was redirected by the familiar ping of an incoming email. To my surprise, it was from Evelyn. The subject line read, Project assistance needed. 
The body of the email explained that she required my help with a project and requested my presence in her office. Nervously, I replied, I'm on my way, my footsteps echoing the anxious beats of my heart as I approached her office. Evelyn welcomed me in, her demeanor professional but inscrutable. She motioned for me to take a seat as she began explaining the intricacies of the project. As she delved into the details, she accidentally knocked over a pen. Reacting instinctively, I bent down to retrieve it, only for my heart to sink as Evelyn's eyes fell upon the pantyhose peeking out from beneath my trousers. The atmosphere shifted, and she cut straight to the point. Is that pantyhose, Adam? Are you wearing pantyhose? She inquired, her tone firm. I found myself rendered speechless, caught in the web of her discovery. Eventually, a meek apology escaped my lips. Sorry, Evelyn. Yes, I am wearing it. Her response was swift and stern. Well, you shouldn't be wearing it to work, Adam. I nodded, acknowledging my lapse in judgment, but Evelyn wasn't done. She questioned my motive, seeking to understand why I felt the need to bring my cross-dressing into the professional realm. Why are you wearing it in the first place? She asked, her gaze unwavering. In that vulnerable moment, I decided to let her into my secret. Well, I'm a cross-dresser, and it just makes me feel comfortable to embrace femininity. Evelyn's expression remained unreadable, a mask concealing her thoughts. With a decisive tone, she declared, work is not the place for it, Adam. A sense of dread settled within me as Evelyn delivered her ultimatum. The threat of HR involvement hung in the air. Panicking, I pleaded, I'm sorry, Evelyn, please don't tell anyone. To my surprise, Evelyn's response was unexpected. Her gaze intensified and she said, show me. I furrowed my brows confusion evident on my face. Show me what? I asked nervously, not entirely sure where this was leading. Show me the pantyhose, she replied, her tone insistent. The air in the room grew heavier as the seconds ticked by. Fumbling with the hem of my trousers, I hesitated before reluctantly pulling them down, revealing the pantyhose I had concealed beneath. Evelyn's eyes lingered on the unexpected revelation, but her expression remained unreadable. However, to my surprise, her next words caught me off guard. Wow, you got panties on too, she remarked, her tone surprisingly nonchalant. They look quite sexy on you, don't they? I felt a mixture of embarrassment and vulnerability, unsure of how to respond. Evelyn's unexpected reaction was far from the condemnation I had anticipated. Instead, she seemed almost intrigued by my secret, and her words carried a hint of approval. Evelyn, still maintaining an air of mystery, took a moment to observe me. You know what? Wait here a second. I've got the perfect thing for you. She disappeared into another room, leaving me standing there, my mind racing with a mix of emotions. Upon her return, she held a black wig and a dress in her hands. Put these on she instructed, her tone a curious mix of authority and friendliness. As I hesitated, she added, trust me, it'll complete the look. With Evelyn's assistance, I donned the black wig, feeling its silky strands cascade around my shoulders. The dress she had chosen was elegant yet subtly alluring. It was a moment of surreal transformation, and I couldn't help but marvel at the unexpected turn of events but Evelyn wasn't finished. From her desk, she produced a lacy bra with breast enhancers. Now you look much more sexy, she commented, her eyes assessing the final result. The inner femininity really came out, didn't it? I stood before her, a blend of emotions swirling within me, surprise, confusion, and a strange sense of acceptance. Evelyn, the enigmatic boss with a reputation that preceded her, had become an unexpected ally in my journey of self-discovery. The lacy bra added a layer of authenticity to the ensemble, enhancing the illusion of femininity. As I admired the reflection in the mirror, Evelyn's voice broke the silence. No sexy woman wears regular shoes. We like to wear heels. 
She reached into the cupboard next to her and pulled out a pair of stylish heels. Here, put these on. With a mix of curiosity and compliance, I slipped into the heels she offered. The moment my feet settled into the elevated position, I felt a subtle transformation. The shoes, in their elegant design, added a touch of sophistication and femininity. Suddenly, my posture improved, and I found myself instinctively crossing my legs. A smile crept across my face as I looked up at Evelyn. You're right, I admitted. I do feel much more sexy. Evelyn returned the smile, her eyes betraying a glint of satisfaction. It's amazing what a pair of heels can do, isn't it? Confidence starts from the ground up. I had always considered my secret to be well hidden, buried deep beneath the facade of my everyday life. For years, I had hidden my true self, the part of me that longed to embrace femininity and wear the clothes I had only dared to dream about. But everything changed the day I received that unexpected invitation. My name is Kevin, a seemingly ordinary man working at a modest office job. While I excelled in my career, I concealed a hidden desire, the yearning to cross-dress, to feel the soft embrace of women's clothing against my skin. It was my secret world, a realm I ventured into only in the solitude of my home. Then there was Michelle, my boss. She was the epitome of confidence and sophistication, a woman who seemed to have life entirely figured out. She was aware of my existence at work, as she was everyone's boss, but we had never shared much beyond professional interactions. I admired her from a distance, a woman who appeared to have it all together. It was an ordinary day at the office when I received an email from Michelle, marked with the subject line, Urgent Work Task. The message was brief and puzzling. Kevin, I need you to meet me at Lace Elegance, the lingerie store downtown. We have a work-related task to complete. Dress appropriately. See you there at 4 p.m. My heart raced as I read the message repeatedly, my mind swirling with confusion and anxiety. A lingerie store? Why would my boss want to meet me there? The ambiguity of the message left me perplexed, and I couldn't help but wonder what lay ahead. The clock ticked closer to 4 p.m., and as the hour drew near, I couldn't help but contemplate the unusual nature of the situation. A myriad of scenarios played out in my mind, each one more bizarre than the last. As I stepped into lace elegance, the tinkling bell above the door signaled my arrival. Rows of delicate lingerie and silk robes adorned the shelves, a stark contrast to the uncertainty I felt. I looked around, scanning the store for any sign of Michelle. Little did I know that this unexpected invitation was the catalyst for a remarkable journey, one that would lead me down a path of self-discovery, understanding, and transformation. Standing amidst the lace and satin, I felt like a fish out of water. The anxiety that had been simmering within me had now reached a boiling point. Why would Michelle invite me to a lingerie store of all places for a work-related task? The whole situation felt surreal. As minutes ticked by, I couldn't help but fidget and look at the clock nervously. My heart raced with each passing second. I tried to shake off the unease that had settled over me. What could this possibly be about? A work task at a lingerie store was beyond my realm of comprehension. Just as I was about to give in to the temptation to abandon this peculiar rendezvous, the bell above the entrance jingled softly, signaling someone's arrival. I turned to see Michelle, her graceful presence filling the store with an air of sophistication. She was dressed impeccably, as always, her confidence radiating from every step. Kevin... She greeted me with a warm smile, her eyes glittering with amusement. Michelle, I replied, my voice betraying my uncertainty. I must say, this is a rather unconventional choice of meeting place. Her laughter was melodic, a pleasant sound that instantly put me at ease. I thought it might be a change of scenery for a work-related task, she said. Besides, I have a feeling you might appreciate it. I raised an eyebrow in response unsure of how to interpret her words. But before I could question her further, she leaned in slightly and lowered her voice. Kevin, I know about your secret. My heart skipped a beat. How could she know? The secret I had guarded so carefully was now exposed, and I felt a shiver of panic race down my spine. Michelle had seen through my carefully constructed facade. 
I stammered, struggling to find my words. How, how did you? She interrupted my faltering sentence with a reassuring gesture. I've known for a while, Kevin. I've seen the subtle hints, the tiny glimpses of your true self that you thought went unnoticed. But I promise it's not something to be ashamed of. In fact, I find it quite remarkable. My astonishment grew as she continued. We all have our secrets, our hidden desires. I have mine, too. With Michelle's revelation, the walls of secrecy that I had painstakingly erected over the years began to crumble. The weight of my secret was slowly lifting, and I found myself in a candid conversation with my boss, one that transcended the boundaries of our professional relationship. As Michelle and I continued our conversation, the once intimidating atmosphere of the lingerie store seemed to dissipate, replaced by an unexpected camaraderie. She spoke to me with such empathy and understanding that it was impossible not to feel a sense of relief. Kevin, Michelle said, her voice soothing, I brought you here to explore a side of yourself that you've kept hidden for so long. There's no need for fear or shame. Let's embrace it. Her words echoed in my mind. It was a prospect I had never considered, browsing through a lingerie store with my boss, a woman who had just revealed she knew my most intimate secret. But there was an undeniable allure in her offer, a curiosity that had always lingered within me. I glanced at the racks of lingerie, the colors and textures calling out to me. With a reluctant nod, I finally agreed to give it a try. It was an odd mixture of apprehension and excitement that guided me as I reached for a piece of delicate lace. As I held the lingerie in my hands, I couldn't help but notice the intricacy of the design, the softness of the fabric. It was a different kind of beauty, one that I had only admired from afar until now. Michelle encouraged me to explore the store, to choose pieces that appealed to me. She suggested that we create an experience out of it, free from judgment and self-criticism. We moved through the store, hand in hand, each selection a step further into uncharted territory. I picked out a few pieces that spoke to me, trying to quell the internal battle between my longing to explore this side of myself and the fear of societal judgment. It was an unusual and lighthearted shopping experience, one filled with laughter and shared moments that made me feel truly understood. As we approached the checkout section, the shopping bags filled with lingerie in tow, I couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude for Michelle's unwavering support and understanding. The initial apprehension I had felt at the prospect of exploring this side of myself was now overshadowed by the warmth of our shared moments. As we stood before the counter, Michelle surprised me once more. Kevin, she said with a playful smile, consider this a treat from me. It's all on me. I was taken aback, unsure of how to react. Her kindness knew no bounds, and I found myself unable to express my gratitude adequately. Thank you, I managed to say, my voice filled with sincerity. Michelle's eyes sparkled with amusement as she continued. I hope you've got nothing else planned for today because I have one more surprise in store for you. Curiosity peaked. I nodded, eager to discover what more this day had in store. Little did I know that the unexpected transformations were far from over. Michelle revealed her next surprise, a makeover session at a beauty salon. It was an opportunity for me to experience the full spectrum of femininity, a realm I had only explored in secret until now. We headed to the salon, where I would be introduced to a world of makeup, hairstyling, and fashion that was entirely foreign to me. The prospect of this makeover was both thrilling and nerve-wracking, but Michelle's unwavering support gave me the courage to step into this new experience with an open heart. As I settled into the salon chair, surrounded by the soft hum of hair dryers and the gentle touch of makeup brushes, I couldn't help but feel a sense of anticipation. The transformative journey I had embarked upon was far from over, and I was ready to embrace it with Michelle by my side. The makeup artist's chair was surprisingly comfortable as I settled in, the soft, cushioned surface cradling me. The anticipation inside me mingled with excitement and a bit of nervousness as the makeup artist began their work. The gentle touch of brushes against my skin felt foreign, yet strangely comforting. 
It was a sensation I had never experienced before, and it marked the beginning of my journey into a new realm of self-discovery. As the makeup artist skillfully worked, applying foundation, eyeshadow, and lipstick, I couldn't help but watch my reflection in the mirror. Each stroke and each layer of makeup brought forth a transformation that was both surprising and beautiful. Michelle stood by my side, her presence a soothing reminder of the acceptance and support that had brought us here. She complimented each step of the transformation, her words filled with genuine admiration. Kevin, you look stunning, Michelle said, her voice warm and encouraging. Her eyes held a sense of pride, as if she were watching a close friend blossom into their true self. It was a sentiment that filled my heart with gratitude and gave me the confidence to fully embrace this new side of me. It's funny how life can take you on unexpected journeys, ones you'd never imagine yourself embarking on. You see, I'm just an ordinary guy, working at a prestigious company where everything seems meticulously organized, where each day blends into the next, and where surprises are about as common as unicorns. But beneath the facade of normalcy, Beneath the crisp suits and polished shoes, I harbored a secret that I kept locked away, hidden from the world. My name is Tony, and like any other person, I had my quirks and idiosyncrasies. Yet one aspect of my life was anything but ordinary, my fascination with cross-dressing. It was a secret desire I had nurtured for as long as I could remember, a longing to embrace a side of myself that society had deemed unconventional. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the office became cloaked in shadows, I found myself alone at my desk. It was a rare moment of solitude amidst the chaos of corporate life and a sense of curiosity washed over me. I gazed around the room, my eyes scanning the familiar surroundings, searching for something to distract me from the monotony of paperwork. And that's when I saw them a pair of exquisite high heels so out of place in the sterile office environment that they might as well have been artifacts from another dimension. They were Catherine's, my boss's, hidden beneath her desk, peeking out like a pair of forbidden treasures. For a brief moment, I hesitated, my heart pounding with a mixture of excitement and trepidation. I'd never dared to indulge my secret fantasies in the workplace before, let alone when the heels belonged to my boss, but there, in the hushed office, something compelled me to cross that line. With trembling hands, I reached out and picked up one of the high heels. Its elegant design fascinated me. The slender stiletto, the rich burgundy color, the delicate strap that wrapped around the ankle. I marveled at the craftsmanship, my fingers tracing the contours as though it were a work of art. My curiosity gave way to temptation, and before I could stop myself, I slipped off my own shoes and with a nervous exhale, slid my foot into Catherine's high heel. The feeling was both exhilarating and disorienting. My senses were heightened, and every step I took in those heels was like a dance of uncertainty. As I stood there, swaying slightly on unfamiliar ground, I couldn't help but steal a glance at my reflection in the office window. There, beneath the harsh fluorescent lights, I saw myself in a new light. The heels lent me a certain grace, an allure that was undeniably feminine. The heels had opened a door to a world I had longed to explore, but reality had an uncanny way of intruding upon even the most fantastical of moments. Just as I was beginning to revel in this newfound allure, I heard a faint sound from the adjacent office block, the echo of footsteps approaching ever closer. Panic surged through me like an electric shock, snapping me out of my momentary reverie. With a hurried haste, I slipped off Catherine's heels, my heart pounding as I placed them back exactly where I had found them beneath her desk. I hastily returned to my own shoes, feeling the cold, hard floor beneath me once more. As I tiptoed towards the office door, my breath caught in my throat. The footsteps grew louder, now echoing ominously in the corridor outside. My heart raced as I envisioned the awkward conversation that would surely follow if I were caught in Catherine's office, wearing her heels, no less. With one last furtive glance at the office, I made my escape, closing the door as quietly as possible.
The office corridor was deserted, bathed in the harsh, impersonal glow of fluorescent lights. I tried to maintain an air of nonchalance as I walked towards the exit, my heart still pounding in my chest. Once I was outside in the cool night air, a wave of relief washed over me. I had narrowly avoided a potentially embarrassing situation. But as I stood there, the memory of those moments inside Catherine's office replayed in my mind, like a siren's call beckoning me back. At home, I found it impossible to shake the memory of those heels, the sensation of walking in them, of feeling a certain elegance and allure that was undeniably feminine. It was as if a new facet of my identity had been unearthed, a secret yearning that I had buried deep within myself. I couldn't help but wonder when I might have the opportunity to explore this hidden side of me again. The thrill of it all, the way it had awakened something dormant within me, was both exhilarating and terrifying. It was a secret, a desire I had yet to fully comprehend, but it had already begun to shape my thoughts and desires in ways I couldn't ignore. As I lay in bed that night, my mind was filled with possibilities. I couldn't predict where this curiosity would lead me, but one thing was certain. I had taken my first step into a world of secrets and desires that I couldn't turn away from. The allure of those heels had me firmly in its grip, and I knew that there was no going back. The allure of those heels had ignited a fire within me, a burning curiosity that refused to be extinguished. I knew that I was treading on unfamiliar ground, venturing into a world that was entirely unknown to me, yet I couldn't help but be drawn to it. Days turned into nights and nights into weeks. I found myself staying late at the office, my excuse always some urgent task that needed completion. But the real reason was much simpler. The heels. Catherine's heels, to be precise. There they sat beneath her desk, as if beckoning to me, calling me to embrace that hidden desire once more. And every time I succumbed to temptation, slipping those heels onto my feet, I felt a rush of excitement that coursed through my body. It was as if a new persona emerged with each step I took, a persona that I had only glimpsed in secret. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the office, I couldn't resist the pull any longer. The heels called out to me, and I found myself standing before Catherine's desk, gazing at them with a mixture of desire and trepidation. I slipped off my own shoes and placed them carefully next to her chair. As I slid my feet into those heels, a shiver of exhilaration ran down my spine. The sensation was familiar yet thrillingly foreign. I stood up tentatively, my heart pounding in my chest. Fate, it seemed, had other plans for me that evening. Just as I was beginning to revel in the sensation of those heels, the office door swung open with a suddenness that sent my heart racing. I froze, caught red-handed wearing Catherine's heels, my heart hammering like a jackhammer. Catherine stood in the doorway, her eyes widening in shock and disbelief as she took in the scene before her. The air in the room seemed to thicken, and I could practically taste the tension that hung between us. For a moment, time seemed to stand still. There was no escaping the reality of the situation. I had been caught, my secret exposed in the most unexpected and embarrassing way possible. All I could do was wait for the inevitable confrontation, my mind racing as I tried to come up with an explanation, an excuse, anything to mitigate the awkwardness of the moment. When Catherine finally spoke, her voice was ice cold and laced with a simmering rage. What do you think you're doing? Her words hung in the air, sharp as a blade. I stammered, my mind racing to find an explanation, any explanation that would make sense of my inexplicable actions. I, I don't know. I managed to stammer out, my voice quivering with embarrassment. I just, I was curious, I guess. Catherine's brows furrowed, her anger intensifying. Curious, she repeated, her tone dripping with incredulity. This is my office, Tony, my private space. It's not a playground for your curiosity. I felt a crushing weight of guilt, and I could see the disappointment in her eyes. It was a look that cut me to the core, making me wish I could turn back time and erase my foolish decisions. Then came the ultimatum, her words sharp and uncompromising. 
If you're so curious, Catherine said, her voice low and dangerous, then you're going to explore that curiosity fully. I blinked, not sure if I had heard her correctly. What do you mean? Catherine's lips curled into a wry, almost cruel smile. You're going to cross-dress, Tony. You're going to wear a dress and a wig, and you're going to do it right here, right now. My heart raced at her words, and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. The situation had gone from bad to worse in a matter of moments. I was being confronted about my secret, and now I was being coerced into embracing it fully, right under Catherine's watchful eye. I tried to protest, to find some way out of this humiliating predicament, but Catherine's gaze silenced me. Her eyes held a challenge, daring me to defy her. It was a battle I knew I couldn't win, not in this moment of vulnerability and shame. With a heavy sigh, I nodded, defeated. Okay, I whispered, my voice filled with resignation. I'll do it. Catherine's smile widened, but there was no warmth in it. It was a smile that promised both humiliation and transformation, a smile that marked the beginning of a journey I had never anticipated, a journey into the unknown world of cross-dressing that would change my life in ways I couldn't yet fathom. Catherine's smile remained enigmatic as she took control of the situation. There was a certain calculated precision to her movements, like a conductor leading an orchestra. She walked over to her desk and retrieved a box from one of the drawers. With deliberate care, she opened it, revealing a lustrous wig, its strands flowing like liquid ebony. This will be the first step, she declared, holding the wig out toward me. Put it on. I hesitated for a moment, my fingers trembling as I took the wig from her. It was a symbol of the transformation that was about to occur, and I couldn't help but wonder where this journey would lead me. Catherine didn't rush me. She watched as I carefully adjusted the wig onto my head, feeling the strange sensation of hair cascading down my shoulders. The transformation had begun, and there was no turning back, but Catherine was far from finished. Now, the dress, she commanded, her tone leaving no room for argument. She led me to a corner of the office where a garment bag hung discreetly. As she unzipped it, the dress emerged, an elegant and form-fitting ensemble that seemed tailor-made for this moment. My heart pounded as Catherine held it up, her eyes appraising me. This should fit you well, she remarked, her voice carrying a hint of amusement. She had me stand there as I slowly undressed, feeling the weight of her gaze upon me. Each piece of clothing I removed seemed like a layer of armor, leaving me increasingly exposed and vulnerable. As I stood there in my underwear, my sense of self-consciousness was overwhelming. But Catherine wasn't done with her demands. She reached into another drawer, producing a delicate pair of lacy panties. Ladies don't wear boxers, she stated matter-of-factly, offering me the panties. I blushed furiously as I accepted them, slipping them on beneath the watchful gaze of my boss. The soft fabric clung to my skin, a stark contrast to the practicality of the boxers I was used to wearing. The lacy panties felt alien against my skin, a reminder of how far I had strayed from my usual attire. My face remained flushed with embarrassment as I looked at Catherine, who seemed entirely unfazed by the situation. Her piercing gaze bore into me as if she were dissecting my very soul. You've always liked my heels, haven't you? She remarked with a knowing smile, her tone a peculiar blend of authority and amusement. Well, I think it's only fair you keep them. My heart raced as I looked down at the heels still adorning my feet. They were a symbol of the allure that had drawn me into this bizarre situation, and now they were a part of me, inseparable from the changes that were unfolding. Catherine's intentions remained a mystery to me. Was this an act of humiliation, a form of punishment for my curiosity? Or was there something more profound at play, something beyond the boundaries of my understanding? She stepped closer, her hand gently tilting my chin upward. Now, let's get started on your makeup, she declared, her tone brisk and businesslike once more. As she meticulously applied makeup to my face, she gave me instructions and explanations. It was both humiliating and oddly intimate, her fingers brushing against my skin, 
accentuating my features in a way I had never experienced before. I felt exposed and vulnerable, not just physically, but emotionally. This was a transformation I had never anticipated, and it was happening under the watchful eye of my boss, Catherine, who seemed to revel in my discomfort. Yet, despite the humiliation, there was a strange sense of liberation in letting go, in surrendering to the process. The person I saw in the mirror was a woman I had never met before, and I couldn't deny the allure of this newfound identity. I'm Tim, and to anyone who knew me at the office, I was as ordinary as they come. The epitome of a mild-mannered office worker, I blended seamlessly into the corporate world. Neatly combed hair, crisply pressed shirts, and a perpetually knotted tie were the trademarks of my appearance. My co-workers knew me as punctual, efficient, and dedicated to the job. To them, I was unremarkable. A piece of the office furniture, and that's exactly how I wanted it. However, beneath this carefully cultivated facade of normality was a secret I held close to my heart. I was a cross-dresser. By night, I transformed into Tina a persona I had crafted over the years. But as Tina, I dared not venture outside the privacy of my small apartment. It was my sanctuary, a place where I could be free to explore this hidden part of myself. My journey into cross-dressing began as a curiosity, a lingering question in the back of my mind. I had always been fascinated by women's fashion, the elegance of dresses, and the allure of makeup. It was a fascination I had to keep hidden, buried beneath the weight of societal expectations and the fear of judgment. As time passed, that curiosity evolved into something deeper. I couldn't resist the desire to explore this hidden aspect of myself further. It became an essential part of who I was, a way to express a side of me that I had long suppressed. Creating Tina was a meticulous process. I had assembled a wardrobe that held a treasure trove of dresses each carefully selected to reflect a different facet of Tina's personality. Lace, satin, and sequins adorned these garments, and they were complemented by an array of accessories that added the finishing touches to my transformation. My evenings, after the workday concluded, were dedicated to my secret rituals. I would retreat to a room tucked away at the far end of my apartment, one that held all the tools I needed for my transformation. There, I would shed my mundane identity as Tim and allow Tina to emerge from the depths of my soul. It was a painstaking process, one that involved meticulous makeup application, wig selection, and a delicate attention to detail. With each passing day, I grew more adept at embodying Tina, finding solace and fulfillment in her presence. But as any cross-dresser will tell you, the thrill of this clandestine activity is always tinged with a sense of fear. The fear of discovery, of being exposed, of the world learning of my hidden passion gnawed at me every day. And then came the day when that fear became a reality. It was an ordinary afternoon at the office, with the usual rhythm of ringing phones and clacking keyboards. I was engrossed in my tasks, my mind far from the secrets that lay hidden in my apartment. Little did I know that this mundane day would mark the beginning of a profound and unexpected chapter in my life. As I immersed myself in my work, a message from Amanda, my boss, popped up on my computer screen. She requested a brief meeting in her office to discuss an urgent matter. It was a summons I couldn't ignore, so I gathered my papers and headed toward her corner office. As I stood before Amanda's office door, a sense of trepidation washed over me. She was a formidable figure in the corporate world, known for her sharp intellect and uncompromising demeanor. I had interacted with her professionally on numerous occasions, always striving to meet her high expectations. With a deep breath, I knocked on her door and awaited her permission to enter. A curt, come in, signaled that I was welcome, and I stepped into her office. Amanda sat behind her imposing desk, her sharp gaze fixed on her computer screen. She was engrossed in a spreadsheet, her fingers tapping the keyboard with precision. Her office was a reflection of her personality, organized, efficient, and devoid of any personal touches. Tim, she said, acknowledging my presence with a brief nod. I appreciate you coming on short notice. I need your assistance with a matter that requires your expertise. 
I nodded, ready to assist in any way I could. Amanda was not one to waste time with pleasantries, so I waited for her to provide further details. As she continued to focus on her computer, Amanda leaned back in her chair, a thoughtful expression crossing her face. This project is crucial, and I've been reviewing the data meticulously, she began, her fingers now steepled in front of her. However, I've encountered a minor issue that requires your assistance. I need you to pull up some data from our archives. I agreed to help, and she instructed me to access the company's database on the shared drive. It was a straightforward request, one that fell well within my purview. I approached her desk and prepared to input the necessary commands into her computer. But as I leaned over her desk, my trousers shifted slightly, revealing a glimpse of something that should have remained hidden, a sheer, delicate fabric, pantyhose, hugging my legs. In that instant, time seemed to stand still. My heart pounded in my chest, and a cold sweat formed on my brow. The world blurred around me, and the air in Amanda's office grew thick with tension. Amanda's sharp eyes, which had been fixed on her computer screen, suddenly flicked upward. Her gaze locked onto the exposed pantyhose, and a silence descended upon the room. A silence that echoed with the weight of my secret. A silence that would change everything. I had been caught in the act, my hidden world exposed in the most unexpected and humiliating way possible. Amanda, my boss, had discovered my secret, and there was no turning back. Amanda's eyes widened with a mixture of shock and disbelief as they remained fixed on my exposed pantyhose. I felt a wave of embarrassment wash over me, my face flushing crimson. All those years of careful concealment, the elaborate rituals of transformation, now lay exposed before her. In that moment, I wanted nothing more than to vanish into thin air, to escape the awkward and vulnerable position I found myself in. My mind raced, desperately searching for a plausible explanation, a way to salvage some semblance of dignity. I can explain, I stammered, my voice betraying my unease. It's not what it looks like. Amanda's gaze remained unwavering, her piercing blue eyes seeming to bore into my soul. She slowly rose from her chair, her movements deliberate and controlled. I couldn't tear my eyes away from the pantyhose, those delicate symbols of my hidden identity that now seemed to mock me. For a moment, silence hung heavily in the room, broken only by the distant hum of office activity beyond the closed door. I watched as Amanda crossed her arms, her expression still a mixture of shock and curiosity. Explain, Tim, she finally said her tone cool and composed. My mind raced, and I stumbled over my words as I tried to articulate the truth. I, I have a, a personal reason for wearing them, I began, my voice trembling. It's not work-related. I didn't mean for anyone to see. I, Amanda held up a hand to silence me, her features softening ever so slightly. Take a deep breath, Tim, she instructed, her voice surprisingly gentle. I'm not here to judge you, at least not yet, but I do need to understand what's going on here. I took her advice and inhaled deeply, trying to steady my racing heart. The adrenaline coursing through my veins was overwhelming, but I knew I had to explain myself as best as I could. With hesitant words, I began to share my secret with Amanda. I told her about Tina, my alter ego, the part of me I had hidden from the world. I explained my fascination with women's fashion, the feeling of freedom and expression I found in it. It was a confession, raw and unfiltered, one I had never expected to make to anyone, let alone my boss. Amanda listened intently, her eyes fixed on me. She didn't interrupt or pass judgment, instead she seemed genuinely interested in understanding my perspective. When I finally fell silent, my voice hoarse from the unexpected revelation, Amanda nodded slowly. I see, she said, her tone still composed. This is certainly unexpected, Tim, but it's also personal and I respect that. Relief washed over me, but it was tempered by uncertainty. Amanda's reaction had been more understanding than I could have hoped for, but the situation remained fraught with tension. My secret was out, and I had no idea what the consequences would be. I appreciate your understanding, I replied, my voice shaky. I never meant for anyone to find out. I've been careful for so long. 
Amanda's lips quirked into a faint, almost sympathetic smile. I can see that, she said. But the fact remains that we now share this secret. For now, I'll keep it between us. However, I have a proposal, Tim. Her words hung in the air, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of trepidation. What kind of proposal could she possibly have in mind? The dynamic between us had shifted, and I had no idea where this unexpected turn of events would lead. What kind of proposal? I asked cautiously. Amanda's gaze bore into mine, her eyes filled with a curious intensity. I want to help you, she said, her voice taking on a note of determination. I want to guide you in this journey of yours, to explore this side of yourself in a way you never have before. Her words left me stunned and intrigued, my mind racing with possibilities. What did she mean by helping me explore this side of myself? And how would our newfound secret change the dynamic between us? In the days that followed our unexpected revelation, Amanda and I found ourselves entangled in a secret, unspoken understanding. Our working relationship remained intact, but beneath the surface, there was an unspoken bond that had formed between us. The tension that initially hung between us began to dissipate, replaced by a growing sense of curiosity on Amanda's part. She had shown a level of understanding and empathy that I hadn't expected, and it left me both grateful and intrigued. One morning, as I settled into my office routine, I received an email from Amanda. It was brief and to the point, requesting my presence in her office at the end of the workday. I couldn't help but wonder what this meeting would entail. As the hours ticked by, my mind raced with anticipation. What could Amanda possibly want to discuss with me now? The secret she had stumbled upon continued to cast a shadow over our interactions, making every encounter with her feel charged with a unique tension. Finally, as the clock neared the end of the workday, I gathered my thoughts and headed toward Amanda's office. My heart thudded in my chest and my palms felt clammy. I couldn't deny the mix of emotions that swirled within me, nervousness, curiosity, and a flicker of excitement. When I entered her office, Amanda was already seated behind her desk, her gaze focused on her computer screen. She acknowledged my presence with a nod, but her attention remained fixed on her work. It was as if this meeting were just another item on her agenda. Take a seat, Tim, she said, her voice cool and composed. I complied, sitting across from her desk. The room was bathed in the soft glow of afternoon sunlight, casting long shadows across the office. Amanda leaned back in her chair, her fingers steepled in front of her, a contemplative expression on her face. Tim, she began, her tone measured. I've been doing some research. My curiosity deepened. Research? About what? I waited for her to continue. She continued, her gaze unwavering. About your... Interests she said, choosing her words carefully. Your fascination with cross-dressing, the persona you've created, and the experiences you've had. I swallowed hard, my secret laid bare once again. It was a vulnerable moment, knowing that Amanda had delved into the depths of my hidden world. Amanda leaned forward slightly, her piercing blue eyes locking onto mine. I want to understand, she said, her voice softer now. I want to understand this part of you, Tim, and I believe I can help you explore it in a way you've never been able to before. Her words hung in the air, and I couldn't help but feel a mix of confusion and intrigue. What did she mean by helping me explore this part of myself? How could she possibly assist me in something so deeply personal and private? I don't understand, I admitted, my voice tentative. Amanda's lips curved into a faint, enigmatic smile. I'm proposing a unique arrangement, she explained, one where I become your guide of sorts, your mistress in this secret world we've discovered. I want to help you fully embrace your desires, Tim. The weight of her proposal settled over me, leaving me with more questions than answers. A mistress? An arrangement that would see Amanda guiding me in my cross-dressing journey. It was an unexpected proposition, one that I had never anticipated. My mind raced, the possibilities and implications of Amanda's offer swirling in my thoughts. I knew I had to make a decision, one that could forever change the trajectory of my secret life. In the end, 
curiosity and a sense of trust in Amanda's understanding won out. With a hesitant nod, I agreed to her proposal, setting in motion a series of events that would lead us down a path neither of us could have predicted. The next day, I found myself accompanying Amanda on an unexpected outing. We were going shopping, but not for office supplies or groceries. We were shopping for feminine clothing and accessories, an excursion that marked the beginning of a new chapter in my secret life. As we strolled through the aisles of a boutique, Amanda's guidance became evident. She selected dresses, skirts, blouses, and accessories with an expert eye, her choices reflecting a deep understanding of my hidden desires. With each garment she selected, I couldn't help but marvel at her intuition. After our shopping spree, we returned to her office, where Amanda gestured for me to change into one of the outfits we had purchased. It was my first experience dressing up under her guidance, and as I transformed into the persona I had kept hidden for so long, a sense of liberation washed over me. I stood before her, clad in a feminine ensemble she had selected, my makeup and wig expertly applied with her assistance. It was a transformative experience, and as I looked at myself in the mirror, I couldn't help but feel a growing sense of excitement and anticipation. Amanda observed me with a contemplative expression, her eyes taking in the final result of our efforts. You look stunning, Tim, she said, her voice filled with a mix of pride and satisfaction. Her words filled me with a sense of pride and happiness that I had never experienced before. It was the beginning of a journey, one that would see Amanda guiding me through uncharted territory, helping me fully embrace the depths of my desires. Working late at the office had become a routine for me. As the night wore on, the silence of the empty workplace was only interrupted by the soft sound of typing on my keyboard. The looming deadline for the crucial project had me on edge, determined to give it my all and impress my boss, Claire. My eyes were fixated on the computer screen when I accidentally knocked over a stack of files. Papers scattered across the floor, and I let out an exasperated sigh. As I bent down to pick them up, my hand brushed against an ornate wooden cabinet tucked away in the corner of Claire's office. Intrigued by the mysterious cabinet, I hesitated for a moment before curiosity got the better of me. I pulled open one of its drawers, expecting to find office supplies or some forgotten documents. However, what I found instead left me stunned and speechless. Nestled among the paperwork, I discovered a delicately folded, lacy bra that undeniably belonged to Claire. My heart pounded in my chest as a mix of embarrassment and curiosity washed over me. The bra was an intimate piece of clothing, and I had unintentionally invaded Claire's privacy. Yet, an unusual sense of empowerment seemed to take hold of me. I couldn't help but wonder what it would be like to try on the bra, to experience life from a different perspective. My mind raced with conflicting thoughts, but the allure of this daring act was too enticing to resist. Before I could talk myself out of it, I impulsively tried on the bra. As the soft lace hugged my chest, I felt a mix of awkwardness and exhilaration. It was an unfamiliar sensation, and yet it seemed to unlock a part of me I had kept hidden away. In the midst of my daring experiment, I was suddenly jolted by the sound of footsteps outside the office. Panic surged through me as I realized Claire was coming back in. I quickly removed the bra and desperately looked for a place to hide it. With my heart pounding in my throat, I managed to tuck the bra away just in time. As Claire entered the office, I tried my best to appear nonchalant, praying that she wouldn't notice anything amiss. Jack, still here working late? Claire's voice rang through the room, and I forced a smile, trying to act natural. Yeah, just trying to finish up this project. You know how it is, I replied, hoping my nervousness wasn't too obvious. Claire's gaze seemed to linger for a moment, but she didn't say anything else. Instead, she grabbed the document she needed and exited the office as quickly as she had come in. I let out a sigh of relief, feeling a rush of adrenaline still coursing through my veins. My daring escapade had gone unnoticed, but I couldn't shake the mix of emotions I felt. This unexpected discovery had left me questioning myself and my desires, and I knew that I had stumbled upon something that would change everything. As I drove home that night, 
My mind was in a whirlwind of thoughts and emotions. The discovery of Claire's lacy bra had awakened something within me that I had kept hidden for so long. Memories of my childhood fascination with lacy lingerie and bras flooded my mind, and I couldn't help but wonder why I had never acted on those desires before. Throughout my life, societal norms and expectations had restrained me from exploring this side of myself. I grew up believing that certain interests and curiosities were off-limits, that they weren't meant for me. But now, with the bra still fresh in my memory, I realized that I couldn't ignore this part of who I was any longer. As I reached my apartment, I found myself standing at the threshold, unable to shake the feeling that something profound had shifted within me. It was as if the discovery of the bra had unlocked a part of my mind that I had suppressed for far too long. And in that moment, I made a decision that would change everything. I couldn't stop thinking about the bra and how it had made me feel. The mix of awkwardness and empowerment had left me craving more. I wanted to try it on again, to see myself in the mirror with the lacy garment hugging my chest. But this time, I wanted to take it even further. One day, the temptation to wear the bra at work became too overwhelming to resist. While my heart pounded with both excitement and nervousness, I couldn't suppress the desire to be true to myself. I decided to seize the moment and sneak into Claire's office to don the lacy garment once more. As I carefully opened the door to her office, I couldn't help but feel like I was entering forbidden territory. The adrenaline rush was exhilarating, and the thought of being caught only added to the excitement. I slipped into the bra, embracing this side of myself without any hesitation. As I adjusted the straps nervously, the office door creaked open and my heart skipped a beat. I turned my head to see Claire stepping into her office. Panic surged through me as I tried to come up with a quick plan to hide the evidence, but it was too late. Claire's eyes widened in surprise, and she took a second back, seeming unsure of what she had just witnessed. Oh, sorry, she said, looking away as if to give me some privacy. But as she looked back at me, her eyes filled with a mix of curiosity and concern. It was evident that she knew something was off. Wait a minute, it's you, Claire said, her tone softening as she seemed to piece together the situation. Jack, what the hell are you doing wearing my bra? As Claire looked at me with a mixture of surprise and concern, I knew there was no turning back. It was time to open up and reveal the truth about the feelings and desires that had been hidden for so long. Taking a deep breath, I decided to share my innermost thoughts with Claire. Claire, I began, my voice filled with vulnerability. I've had these thoughts since I was a child. The fascination with lacy lingerie and bras has always been a part of me, but I never acted on it because of societal norms and expectations. The other day, when we were working late, I found your bra, and something in me just couldn't resist trying it on. I'm really sorry if it was inappropriate, and I promise it won't happen again. Claire's surprise was evident, and she seemed genuinely curious about my experiences. I had no idea, she said, her voice softening, but I'm glad you opened up to me, Tell me more about this. I'm genuinely interested. Feeling a mix of relief and nervousness, I hesitated for a moment before finding the courage to open up. I shared my childhood fascination with lacy lingerie and bras, how societal norms had confined me, and how this unexpected discovery had changed everything. Please, Claire, I pleaded. Don't tell anyone else about this. I'm afraid of how they'll react and I don't want it to affect my job or our relationship. Claire nodded understandingly, a reassuring smile on her face. This is a secret between us, Jack. Your feelings are valid, and I'm here to support you. But you don't have to go through this alone. I'm having a girl's sleepover with my friends, and we'd love to help you explore this side of yourself. It'll be fun, I promise. My heart skipped a beat at the invitation, torn between fear and excitement, the thought of being embraced and accepted for who I truly was felt both liberating and terrifying. With a deep breath, I finally mustered the courage to accept Claire's invitation. Okay, I'll come, I said, my voice a mix of nerves and anticipation. As I left the office that day, I couldn't help but wonder how this decision would shape my life. 
As the day of the girls' sleepover approached, I found myself growing increasingly nervous. The thought of being surrounded by Claire's friends, all of whom were strangers to me, filled me with both excitement and trepidation. I questioned whether I was truly ready to take this step, to embrace this other side of me openly among others. At home, I paced back and forth, contemplating whether I should cancel and avoid putting myself in such a vulnerable position. The fear of judgment and rejection weighed heavily on my mind, making me doubt if I could handle facing the unknown. With a deep breath, I made a decision. I wouldn't let fear hold me back. I would attend the sleepover and face whatever challenges lay ahead with courage and an open heart. The night of the sleepover arrived, and I found myself standing outside Claire's door once again, my heart pounding with nerves. Taking a deep breath, I knocked on the door, the sound echoing loudly in the quiet hallway. The door opened, revealing Claire's smiling face. Jack, you made it! Come on in, we've been waiting for you, she said warmly. As I stepped inside, I was greeted by Claire's friends, all of them smiling and welcoming. They were eager to hear about my journey and seemed genuinely interested in getting to know me better. As we settled into the living room, the atmosphere was filled with excitement and laughter. Claire's friends were kind and understanding, and they immediately put me at ease. I felt like I was among friends, even though I had only just met them. Claire playfully joked about the bra incident at the office, and we all laughed together. The camaraderie was infectious, and I felt like I belonged. The girls soon moved on to the transformation part of the sleepover. They offered to help me become Jacqueline once again, with a wig, makeup, and feminine attire. The thought of fully embracing Jacqueline in front of others was both thrilling and terrifying. As the transformation progressed, the girls worked their magic, making me feel like a true Jacqueline. The wig framed my face beautifully, and the makeup highlighted my features flawlessly. When I saw myself in the mirror, I couldn't help but feel amazed at the reflection staring back at me. Wow, you look stunning, Jacqueline, Claire exclaimed, her eyes sparkling with delight. I blushed, feeling a mix of shyness and pride. The acceptance and support I received from Claire and her friends meant more to me than I could express in words. It was a night I would cherish forever, a night that solidified my journey of self-acceptance and authenticity. As the night came to a close, Claire and I found ourselves in a moment of quiet introspection. I felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude for the acceptance and support I had received, not just from Claire, but from all her friends as well. You looked incredible tonight, Jacqueline, Claire said, her eyes filled with warmth. I can see how much it means to you, and I'm really happy you opened up about your feelings. You're always welcome to be your true self around us. I blushed, touched by her words. Thank you, Claire. This night has been incredible, and I can't express how much it means to me to have your support. I'm just glad you had a great time, she replied. You know, it's perfectly okay to explore this side of yourself. If it makes you happy, then you should embrace it. I took a deep breath, feeling a surge of courage welling up inside me. I really did enjoy being Jacqueline tonight, I admitted. It felt like I was finally being true to myself, like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. Claire smiled, her eyes shining with understanding. I can only imagine how liberating that must have been for you. Jacqueline is a part of who you are and she deserves to be embraced and celebrated. As I reflected on the night, I realized that this journey of self-acceptance and authenticity was just the beginning. I wanted to continue embracing Jacqueline and exploring this side of myself. It was a part of me that I had kept hidden for so long, and now I felt ready to let her shine. Just then, one of Claire's friends overheard our conversation and chimed in, you know, there's another step you could take if you're serious about embracing Jacqueline fully, she said, her tone gentle yet curious. I looked at her, intrigued. What do you mean? Hormone replacement therapy, she replied. It's a way to align your physical body with your true gender identity. If becoming Jacqueline is something you dream about, HRT could be the first step on that journey. I felt a mix of excitement and trepidation at the suggestion. The idea of physically transitioning to become Jacqueline had crossed my mind before, but it felt like an overwhelming step to take. Claire stepped in, offering her support once again. 
Jack, you don't have to decide right away, she said. Take your time to think about it and know that we'll be here for you every step of the way. I nodded, grateful for her understanding. The thought of becoming Jacqueline permanently was both thrilling and daunting, and I knew I needed time to process it all. Claire's friend continued to explain how HRT worked and how it could help me on my journey of self-discovery. The more she spoke, the more intrigued I became, envisioning a future where I could fully embrace my true identity as Jacqueline. Claire, sensing my excitement, chimed in playfully. And if you decide to go for it, I'll even pay for you to have big boobs. How's that for support? I couldn't help but smile at her lightheartedness. With Claire and her friends by my side, I felt a newfound sense of courage and determination. No matter where this journey led me, I knew that embracing Jacqueline was a part of my true self, and I was ready to embrace the future with open arms. In the coming days, Claire proved to be true to her word, providing unwavering support and encouragement as I embarked on my HRT journey. She helped me navigate the process, and together we booked an appointment with a supportive and understanding healthcare provider. As the day of the appointment approached, I couldn't help but feel a mix of excitement and nervousness. It was a significant step towards embracing Jacqueline fully, aligning my physical body with my true identity. Claire reassured me that everything would be all right, and her words provided a much-needed sense of calm. On the day of the appointment, Claire accompanied me to the clinic. The healthcare provider explained the HRT process thoroughly, addressing my concerns and making sure I felt comfortable with the decisions I was making. The provider also shared the potential effects and changes that might occur over time. With a deep breath, I decided to go ahead with the HRT. I took my first dose, and as the days passed, I noticed subtle changes within myself. I started to feel more at peace with my identity. It was as if the missing piece of the puzzle had finally fallen into place, and the discord between my mind and body was slowly fading away. Physically, the HRT began to work its magic. My skin became smoother, and my body began to change in ways that felt more authentic. But it was not just the physical changes that made the difference. It was the emotional transformation that truly amazed me. I felt happier, more content, and more in tune with my emotions. The roller coaster of doubts and fears that once plagued me began to subside, replaced by a sense of self assurance and acceptance. The world felt brighter, and I found myself appreciating the little things in life with newfound gratitude. As I continued on my HRT journey, Claire remained my rock. She cheered me on during moments of doubt, celebrated my progress, and reminded me that I was on the path to becoming the person I had always wanted to be. Our bond grew stronger as we navigated this journey together, and I couldn't have asked for a better friend and ally. With each passing day, I felt Jacqueline becoming more integrated into every aspect of my life. She wasn't just a hidden part of me. She was an essential part of who I was, and I was learning to embrace her unapologetically. Claire noticed the profound changes in me, and she couldn't have been happier. One day, she surprised me with a wide smile and a mischievous glint in her eyes. Jacqueline, I have an idea. How about we go on a shopping spree? She suggested. My heart leaped with excitement at the thought of indulging in a day of retail therapy with my closest confidant. That sounds amazing. But Claire, you've already done so much for me, I said, touched by her unwavering support. Claire waved away my concerns, her warmth evident in her voice. Nonsense. This is my treat. We'll have a blast together, she insisted, her eyes sparkling with excitement. We spent the entire day exploring boutiques, lingerie stores, and high-end fashion outlets. With Claire by my side, I felt a newfound confidence in experimenting with different styles and colors. She encouraged me to try on dresses, skirts, blouses, and of course, the most glamorous lingerie. As I stood before the mirror, adorned in a beautiful cocktail dress that accentuated my curves, Claire's eyes lit up with delight. You look absolutely stunning, Jacqueline. That dress was made for you, she complimented, her voice filled with genuine admiration. Tears welled up in my eyes, and I hugged Claire tightly. Thank you, Claire. I couldn't have done any of this without you, 
I said, my voice choked with emotion. Claire returned my embrace, a warm smile gracing her lips. You don't need to thank me, Jacqueline. Being part of your journey has been an honor, and seeing you embrace your true self fills my heart with joy, she said, her voice filled with genuine affection. As we walked hand in hand to a nearby cafe, the sense of camaraderie between us was palpable. We chatted animatedly, laughing at old inside jokes and sharing our hopes and dreams for the future. The bond we shared had grown deeper with each passing day, and I knew that Claire was not just a friend, but a soulmate who had come into my life to bring light and love. At the cafe, we settled into a cozy corner, savoring the aroma of freshly brewed coffee and the anticipation of delicious food. We perused the menu, discussing our favorite dishes as we made our selections. Can you believe how far we've come, Jacqueline? Claire asked, her eyes twinkling with pride. I nodded, my heart swelling with gratitude. It's all because of you. You saw something in me that I couldn't see in myself, and you gave me the strength to embrace Jacqueline wholeheartedly, I replied, my voice tinged with emotion. Claire reached across the table to hold my hand. You were always Jacqueline. I just helped you uncover that beautiful truth, she said softly. As we enjoyed our meal, our conversation turned to the future. Claire suggested we plan a girls' night out to celebrate our journey together. It'll be just us and a few close friends, a night filled with laughter, love, and unforgettable memories, she proposed. The idea thrilled me, and I eagerly agreed. With Claire by my side, I felt invincible, ready to face the world as Jacqueline unapologetically and fearlessly. My heart was filled with gratitude as I sat across from Claire at the cozy cafe. The bond between us had grown stronger with each passing day, and I couldn't help but feel overwhelmed by the support she had shown me. Her unwavering acceptance and encouragement had been the cornerstone of my journey, and I knew that I owed much of my newfound confidence to her. As we sipped our drinks, Claire's eyes twinkled mischievously. You know, Jacqueline, we've covered the sexy clothes, but I think it's time we dive into makeup and hairstyling too, she said, her excitement contagious. I couldn't help but grin, feeling a rush of excitement coursing through me. You're right, I'd love to learn more about makeup and how to style my hair to complement my new look, I replied, eager to explore this uncharted territory. Claire beamed, her enthusiasm evident. Great, we'll make it a beauty makeover day, she declared. In the days that followed, Claire became my personal mentor, teaching me the art of makeup application and experimenting with different hairstyles. She patiently guided me through each step, sharing her beauty secrets and empowering me to embrace my femininity confidently. We spent evenings trying out various looks, laughing as we had our share of makeup mishaps and hairdo blunders. Through it all, Claire's reassuring presence and unwavering encouragement kept me going, reminding me that it was all part of the learning process. As I honed my makeup skills and discovered hairstyles that accentuated my features, I felt a growing sense of self-assurance. Jacqueline was no longer just a name. She was a radiant woman who reveled in expressing her true self to the world. One evening, as we prepared for a night out with Claire's friends, I looked at my reflection in the mirror. The transformation was astounding, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder at the woman looking back at me. Claire stood beside me, smiling proudly at the woman she had helped me become. You are simply stunning, Jacqueline, Claire said, her voice filled with admiration. Tonight, you'll dazzle everyone with your confidence and beauty. And she was right. As we stepped into the gathering of Claire's friends, I was met with warmth and acceptance. They embraced me as one of their own, celebrating my journey and treating me with the respect and kindness I had always longed for. As the night unfolded, I realized that I was no longer the person who hesitated to embrace Jacqueline. I was Jacqueline, fierce and unapologetic, living life on her terms. The bond between Claire and me deepened further, our friendship evolving into a sisterhood built on trust and love. The compliments from Claire's friends filled me with a sense of pride and gratitude. 
Their support and acceptance reaffirmed the value of my journey and the strength of the bond between us. As we continued to celebrate that night, I shared my experiences with hormone replacement therapy, HRT, and my plans for a legal name change. Claire's friends listened attentively, their eyes filled with admiration and respect. You're incredibly brave, Jacqueline. It takes so much courage to embrace your true self and take these steps, one of them said, and the others nodded in agreement. You're an inspiration, Jacqueline. It's amazing to see how far you've come, and we're honored to be part of your journey, another friend added, and the warmth in their words touched my heart. The night wore on, filled with laughter, heartfelt conversations, and a sense of camaraderie that felt like a second family. Claire and her friends had become my support system, a circle of individuals who not only accepted me, but celebrated and cherished me for who I was. As the weeks turned into months, Jacqueline became an integral part of our group, and we continued to share many unforgettable moments together. From more shopping adventures to fun-filled trips and heartfelt conversations over coffee, our sisterhood grew stronger with each passing day. As I moved forward with my transition, Claire remained a constant pillar of strength and guidance. She helped me navigate the legal process of changing my name, and when the day finally arrived for me to embrace my new identity officially, she was right there beside me, beaming with pride. With Jacqueline now my legal name, I felt a sense of liberation like never before. I had shed the name that didn't align with my true self and embraced the identity that felt authentic and genuine. The legal name change marked a turning point in my journey, and I was grateful for the unwavering support that Claire and her friends had shown me throughout. One sunny afternoon, as I was going about my daily routine, the doorbell rang. I opened the door to find Claire standing there, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Hey, Jacqueline, mind if I come in? She asked with a grin. Of course, come on in, I replied, feeling a surge of happiness at seeing my dear friend. As Claire stepped into my home, I couldn't help but notice a glimmer of anticipation in her eyes. She took a deep breath before speaking. I have something important to tell you, Jacqueline something that I hope will make you as happy as it makes me. I furrowed my brow in curiosity, eager to hear what she had to say. What is it, Claire? You're making me curious now, I said with a playful smile. She chuckled softly before continuing. Well, remember when we talked about you getting real breasts? I've been thinking about it, and I want to make it happen for you. I've already booked an appointment for the procedure. My heart skipped a beat and tears welled up in my eyes. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Claire, are you serious? I whispered, my voice trembling with emotion. Her eyes softened with sincerity as she nodded. Absolutely. I know how much this means to you and I want to be there to support you every step of the way. I wrapped my arms around Claire in a tight hug, feeling overwhelmed with gratitude. Thank you, thank you so much. I don't know how to express what this means to me, I said, my voice choked with emotion. She pulled back from the hug, her hands resting on my shoulders. Jacqueline, you don't have to thank me. We're friends, and friends support each other through thick and thin. Your happiness is important to me, and I'll always be here for you, she said with a warm smile. Overwhelmed with emotion, I wiped away a tear that escaped my eye. You've done so much for me already, Claire. I never expected you to do something like this, I said, my voice filled with sincerity. She shook her head gently. There's no need to thank me, Jacqueline. This is a gift from the heart, and I'm doing it because I care about you. With Claire's unwavering support and love, I felt a renewed sense of courage and excitement. The prospect of having real breasts felt like a dream come true, and I couldn't wait to embark on this new chapter of my journey. The day of the appointment finally arrived, and I could hardly contain my excitement and nerves. Claire and I set off for the medical center together, hand in hand, like two inseparable sisters on a shared journey. Her presence was a calming force, and I drew strength from her unwavering support. As we entered the clinic, I felt a surge of emotions wash over me. The waiting room was filled with people, 
each with their own stories and struggles. But I knew that today was a day of empowerment for me, a day to embrace my true self fully. A friendly nurse called my name, and with a deep breath, I followed her down the hall. Claire squeezed my hand reassuringly, her smile giving me the courage to keep going. The medical staff was warm and welcoming, and they made sure I felt comfortable throughout the process. In the examination room, the doctor spoke to me about the procedure, explaining every detail with professionalism and kindness. I nodded, trying to absorb all the information, but my mind was buzzing with excitement and anticipation. With Claire by my side, I felt like I could conquer anything. Her unwavering support made me feel invincible, and I knew that whatever the outcome, I was not alone on this journey. The moment finally arrived, and I was wheeled into the operating room. As I lay on the table, my heart pounded in my chest. The anesthesiologist smiled warmly, assuring me that everything would be fine. I glanced at Claire, who stood just outside the room, her presence a source of comfort even from afar. In that moment, I felt a profound sense of gratitude for Claire's friendship and love. She had been there for me through every step of my transformation, guiding me with kindness and acceptance. I knew that our bond would only grow stronger from here on out. As I drifted off to sleep under the influence of anesthesia, my last thoughts were of Claire and the incredible journey we had embarked on together. I knew that when I woke up, my life would be forever changed, and I was eager to embrace the new chapter that awaited me. When I finally regained consciousness, Claire was the first person I saw. She was sitting by my bedside, her eyes filled with love and concern. Hey there, sleepyhead, she said gently, reaching out to hold my hand. I smiled weakly, still groggy from the anesthesia. Hey, I replied, my voice soft. You did it, Jacqueline, you're amazing, Claire said, her voice filled with pride. I looked down and saw my new breasts for the first time, and tears of joy welled up in my eyes. It felt surreal, yet undeniably right. With Claire by my side, I had embraced my true self, and I couldn't have been happier. In the coming days and weeks, Claire continued to be my pillar of support. She helped me through the recovery process, reminding me to be patient and kind to myself. Her unwavering love and understanding were a constant source of strength, and I knew that I was truly blessed to have her in my life. As time passed, I fully embraced my identity as Jacqueline. I felt more comfortable and confident in my own skin than I had ever felt before. With Claire and her friends by my side, I blossomed into the woman I had always known I was meant to be. As I stepped into the corporate world, a sense of both excitement and apprehension washed over me. Fresh out of college, armed with my newly acquired degree, I had landed a job at an esteemed company as a consultant. The role seemed tailor-made for my academic achievements, and I couldn't help but feel a surge of optimism for my future. Walking through the sleek glass doors of the office building, I marveled at the polished surroundings. The bustling energy and air of professionalism were palpable, leaving me with a mix of awe and nervousness. It was a whole new world, far removed from the comforting familiarity of lecture halls and campus life. As a young graduate, I couldn't shake off the nagging doubts that lurked beneath my surface enthusiasm. Would my youth and lack of experience be stumbling blocks on my journey to success? Would I be able to measure up to the expectations of my superiors and colleagues? These questions echoed in my mind, reminding me of the challenges that lay ahead. Nevertheless, I resolved to face them head on. I was determined to prove my worth, to make a name for myself in this competitive business arena. The prospect of a promising career spurred me forward, driving me to excel and surpass the limitations of my novice status. In the midst of this new environment, I encountered a diverse cast of characters. From ambitious go-getters to seasoned professionals, each person seemed to possess a unique blend of skills and expertise. I observed and absorbed everything, eager to learn from those who had already paved their paths to success. Yet I couldn't help but feel a sense of awe mingled with trepidation. The corporate world had its own set of unwritten rules, its own hierarchies and dynamics. 
I knew I had to navigate this intricate web with finesse and adaptability if I wanted to thrive. With each passing day, I delved deeper into the intricate workings of the company, learning the ropes and immersing myself in the challenges and triumphs that unfolded. I knew that my journey had only just begun, and the path ahead would test my mettle in ways I had never anticipated. As the days turned into weeks at the company, I became familiar with the ins and outs of my role as a consultant. Each morning, I would enter the office with a mix of eagerness and nervous energy, ready to take on new challenges and prove myself in the corporate world. Little did I know that one fateful day would test the limits of my comfort zone in ways I could never have imagined. It started like any other ordinary day at the office, with the hum of busy employees and the click-clack of keyboards filling the air. But as the morning progressed, whispers of an impending crisis began to circulate. A group of investors from Japan was due to arrive for a crucial meeting with our company's top executives, including my boss, Daisy, and her business partner, Kyla. Anxiety hung heavy in the air as the news of Kyla falling ill on such a crucial day spread like wildfire. The implications were dire. Their absence could potentially jeopardize the entire deal and send the investors packing. The thought of the consequences sent a shiver down my spine as I pondered the possibility of losing my newly acquired job. Sensing the tension and desperation in the office, Daisy's gaze fell upon me. With a sense of urgency in her eyes, she beckoned me to follow her. A wave of confusion washed over me as I trailed behind her, unsure of what she had in mind. The anticipation and fear mingled within me, creating a whirlwind of emotions. As we reached a secluded room, Daisy turned to me, her gaze unwavering. This may sound absurd, Kyle, she began, her voice filled with a mix of determination and vulnerability. But I need you to trust me. We have no other option. I need you to become Kyla. Shock coursed through my veins as her words sank in. I protested, stammering out my doubts. But Daisy, I'm a man. How can I possibly pass as Kyla? What if they see right through me? Daisy sighed, placing a reassuring hand on my shoulder. I know it's an unconventional request, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Your youthful appearance and a little makeup can help transform you into Kyla. It's our only chance to salvage the investor meeting and protect our jobs. Reluctantly, I began to understand the gravity of the situation. It was a high-stakes gamble, and I had been thrust into the center of it. Taking a deep breath, I agreed to Daisy's plan, realizing that my own future and the future of the company hung in the balance. With a sense of trepidation, Daisy handed me a tight-fitting dress and urged me to change quickly. My heart raced as I slipped into the unfamiliar garment, the fabric clinging to my form. Daisy then handed me a pair of high heels, teaching me the basics of walking in them. I stumbled at first, my feet unaccustomed to the unsteady elevation, but I quickly adapted copying Daisy's footsteps. As a final touch, she placed a wig on my head, transforming my appearance completely. Looking at my reflection in the mirror, I saw a woman staring back at me, Kyla. A name that felt foreign yet strangely familiar rolled off my tongue as I practiced saying it with a girlish lilt. With my transformation complete, Daisy clasped my hand tightly, her eyes filled with a mixture of determination and gratitude. Together, we left the room, ready to face the investors who held the fate of our company in their hands. As I walked into the meeting room, my heart pounded in my chest, each beat a reminder of the audacious act I was about to commit. The investors sat at the table, their scrutinizing gazes following my every move. With a deep breath, I introduced myself, extending a hand to shake theirs, my voice faltering only slightly. Hello, I'm Kyla. It's a pleasure to meet all of you, I said, hoping that my nerves didn't betray me. The room fell silent as the investors studied me, their eyes searching for any sign of deception. For a moment, it seemed as if the truth would be exposed, but to my surprise, they accepted my presence without question. The meeting commenced, with Daisy taking the lead in presenting the crucial data to the investors. 
My heart continued to race, aware of the fragile web of lies I had woven. The room buzzed with tension as I struggled to maintain the facade of Kyla, praying that my lack of expertise wouldn't be revealed. Inside the meeting room, the weight of my newfound identity as Kyla bore down on me. The investor's eyes lingered, assessing my every move, searching for any sign of deception. It was a high-stakes game, and I had to play my part convincingly to safeguard the company's future. With a deep breath, I composed myself and confidently took the lead, guiding the investors through the intricacies of the presentation. The room remained tense, a silent battlefield where each word held the power to either solidify their trust or expose my facade. As I spoke, I observed the investors' reactions with a mix of anticipation and anxiety. Their expressions were inscrutable, their eyes darting between me and the slides projected on the screen. I focused on maintaining a poised demeanor, channeling the confidence of the businesswoman I was pretending to be. However, beneath the surface, doubt and fear gnawed at me. I lacked the in-depth knowledge and experience to provide comprehensive answers to their probing questions. I had entered this charade without considering the depth of the responsibilities it entailed. Yet I pressed on, weaving my way through their inquiries, artfully deflecting when necessary. Daisy, ever watchful, offered her support whenever my confidence wavered. Together, we created an illusion of competence, striving to convince the investors of our expertise. As the meeting progressed, a subtle shift occurred. The investors' skepticism began to wane, replaced by a growing sense of curiosity and engagement. They leaned forward, actively participating in the discussion, acknowledging my insights and analysis. It seemed that, against all odds, my portrayal as Kyla was slowly winning them over. Nevertheless, a lingering unease remained. Each passing moment carried the risk of exposure, the fear that one wrong move or misplaced word would shatter the illusion I had carefully constructed. I could only hope that our carefully calculated performance would hold until the end. As the meeting drew to a close, the atmosphere shifted once more. The investors, once doubtful, expressed their appreciation for the thoroughness and clarity of our presentation. They commended Kyla's confidence and expertise, unaware that they were praising a facade meticulously upheld. Relief washed over me, mingled with a sense of triumph. We had managed to navigate the treacherous waters of the investor meeting, earning a temporary reprieve from the imminent threat that had loomed over us. However, the victory was bittersweet, as I knew that our deception could not be sustained indefinitely. With the meeting concluded, the investors departed, leaving behind a room filled with a mix of relief and apprehension. Daisy and I exchanged knowing glances, acknowledging the delicate balance we had managed to maintain. Relief and apprehension coexisted within us as the investors departed, leaving behind a room tinged with both triumph and uncertainty. As we stepped out of the meeting room, Daisy turned to me, gratitude evident in her eyes. Kyle, I owe you a big one. Thank you so much for stepping up and playing the role of Kyla, she said, her voice filled with a mix of relief and admiration. Come with me, she continued, leading the way towards the cubicles where our nervous co-workers awaited. Walking in Daisy's shadow, I couldn't help but feel a rush of mixed emotions. The eyes of my colleagues fell upon me, their curious gazes questioning my presence. Daisy's voice cut through the tension as she introduced me. Kyla, meet Kyla, everyone. A chorus of surprised murmurs rippled through the office, and I could sense the collective confusion in the air. I stood there trying to embody the confident businesswoman they believed me to be, a smile plastered on my face. One of my coworkers spoke up, unable to contain their bewilderment. Wait, that's Kyle, isn't it? They asked, their voice tinged with skepticism. Daisy, ever quick on her feet, nodded and replied, Well done. You caught me. We all have Kyle, or should I say Kyla, to thank for saving our company. The room fell into a stunned silence as the truth sank in. It took a moment for the realization to register, but then a wave of gratitude and relief washed over my co-workers.
They erupted into applause and cheers, expressing their heartfelt gratitude for the role I had played. Expressions of admiration and appreciation filled the room as my colleagues took turns congratulating me. Some commented on my appearance, remarking on how pretty I looked. It was a strange sensation, receiving compliments for a beauty I had never fully embraced or considered before. But amidst the celebration, I couldn't help but bask in the warmth of their genuine praise. The nerves that had gripped me earlier dissipated, replaced by a newfound sense of belonging and camaraderie. Smiling and cheering along with my co-workers, I felt a renewed surge of confidence coursing through me. It was an unexpected turn of events, but one that had brought us closer as a team. A huge thank you to our amazing Patreon supporters for exclusive 18-plus content that's too spicy for YouTube, early access to our videos, and a special shout-out in our credits, join us on Patreon. Click the link in the description to sign up and unlock all the exciting extras. Hope you enjoyed this story, and if you're looking for a daily escape into the world of cross-dressing, subscribe now and enjoy new stories every single day.